Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. This week's Nightcap has got quite a varied content. Uh, there's quite a lot of casting in it. I did a, a cast a, a brass pump housing, a brass water pump end cap uh, for Richard Steamwagon last weekend. I showed quite a bit of the casting process because people have asked what I sure how I do sand rolls and whatnot. Not fully in depth, but that's a little bit more than normal. Once the casting comes out of the sand, I bring it back into the workshop, do a bit of work on the lathe, a bit of work on the mill machine, get it machined up and get it finished for them. So that's going to take up quite, probably most of part one and a lot of part two. I may possibly make it a three part night cap, it depends how, how things pan out. I like uploading videos of between 15 and 20 minutes. It's easier for me. I've, people find it... I know if I'm watching a video, I like to watch a 20 minute video, after 20 minutes I've kind of had enough. Also, if I load two 20 minute videos up, I get twice the views. Basically, it's as simple as that. There's some viewer mail come in, a lad called Gary C, sent us a package in with some bits of metal in, some small drills, one or two bits and pieces. One really handy thing, that's a golf ball. You might wonder why, but if you drill a hole in there, it makes a nice handle for a small file or a scraper very controllable. This is the, going to be the new t-shirt, the, the, the Twastad Engineering t-shirt. Um, I've eventually got the, the design finalised. It's a weird teespring now being printed. They're going to do one. Uh, I'll get the first one and I'll get one of the girls to model it possibly. And then once that's done it'll be sort of up for sale, the same as the, the, same as the, the Double Boost t-shirts were. Uh, so if you want a Twastad Engineering t-shirt you'll be able to get one. Uh, these t-shirt sales obviously uh, they support me in the shop and they're going to help me hopefully get to America next year. That's the end cap off the central water pump. I'm going to try and use this as a pattern to cast it. Uh, so I need to fill all the holes in and blend things a bit, make things a lot smoother so I'll be able to get it out of the sand. I'm just going to use car body filler to fill the holes in. Definitely a gloves on job this. Quite well fill this has gone a little bit hard but it'll do the job. And the ratio is a golf ball size ball of filler and a pea size ball of hardener and that'll make it go off. It actually goes off a little bit quicker when it's when it starts to get a bit of age about it. But I'm sure it'll do for what I need it to do. Fill the holes in first. It sounds off very easy this stuff so it's not, not a great problem to get too much on. That's basically the holes filled in. And the finger comes into play just to blend it a little bit into the contours. So once this has gone hard, but the sound it quite easily. The thing with body filler is no one went to, went to stop putting it on, went to leave it alone. I think we just sort of leave it alone now. As this is a casting, it's already got an angle on there. That's what we we'll call a draft angle. That helps it come to the sand. This body filler is quite soft, it's easy to sand. You see what's gone through and filled the holes underneath as well. I've just got to coat this in body filler and in there and blend it in nice and smooth. Obviously, the more time you put into this and the better finish you get on here, the better your casting is going to be. 
because the casting is going to be a, an exact copy of what this is except it'll be very slightly smaller it's nice to think that the CNC uses a bit of emery tape on your fingers and your thumb are better at doing this than any machine to feel that round there it's starting to take shape now where it wants a little bit more filler in these two corners and across the top of there I'll mix a little bit more filler up and just do that little bit with all the tools that are available you still can't beat a finger for doing this this is a quick mix as well as a lot of hardener in here so it'll go off nice and quickly don't be fine to put plenty on because it sands off very easily I spent a fair bit more time now sanding this with finer and finer grades of paper and I'm quite happy with the, the result there now there's a little bit there it wants to come off it's so easy it actually removes it the body filler is ideal for doing this right now the inside these grooves here have to be filled in I'll put some more in there and then smooth that out in there as well that's the crucible I use I just use it for bronze this is what we're going to cast it out of Some bits of bronze of a machine tool, scraps of bronze off the last casting. That's been a bit of part of a, a rise off the last casting. Once that melts, we'll get some more in. Excess bronze is cast in the ingots like that. I've got the pattern nicely cleaned up, nice and smooth, or is it it's smooth enough for what it's got to do? I'm actually going to do two castings. I'm going to cast one of these valve chests as well for my friend Bob. So we'll do two in one go. This just stops the sand sticking to the, the sand from st sticking to the pattern. This is going to be cast in what they call green sand. You can see the sand's not green, it's sand coloured. The green refers to the moisture content of the sand. The first layer of sand, the bit that comes in contact with the pattern, that goes through a riddle just to get any bits of bronze and bits of aluminium shine out of the, out of the sand from previous previous times right so we've got a nice covering of saved sand I'm not going to show the whole process but I'm going to show one or two important bits this is an important bit I'm going to put a couple of wood screws into there and all these are four I want to call gaggers and it's just to stop the piece of sand that's in there from falling out when we come to take the pattern out of the mould A little bit more riddle sand right ordinary sand on top of that and this gets rammed down into place to take up all the voids it's important it's rammed down firm but not absolutely solid you still need to keep some porosity in the sand It's 
what you don't want to happen, but it means it shows that the pattern is going to come out of the, the sand easily. I'll drop it back in. Of course the pattern is very heavy, it's made of cast iron. I really should have had a board on there and turned it over the board. Anyway, what I really should have done, what we did do, are two different things. Once again, pot and powder. And again, the first layer of sand is put through a riddle or a sieve. Good. And that's rammed down just the same. Right, the sand's been rammed down. We need to put some holes in it just to help the ventilation, make the sand porous to a certain degree. And then we need a hole to get the metal into. This is called a sprue. I'm going to put one right in the middle. There's several ways of doing this, but uh, this way normally works quite well for me. down into the second box or the bottom part of the box the bottom box or flask just to create a basin in there that'll do so this is where the metal is going to be poured in just remove any any loose bits make a nice a nice funnel so I can hit it with a molten metal. I haven't got a great lot of room here to do to do video. I need the flask for taking apart. I was a little bit off with the position that we sprue with a It'll be all right. So the molten metal comes down into there. Any shites collected in there, it goes from there straight into the casting. And across into this casting. These are called gates. The gate the gates where it goes into the into the actual casting, or into the, the mould where the pattern's been. And the little passage is called a runner. Right, we need now to get the, the patterns out of the sand before we try and get the patterns out of the mould we'll give them a little tap this is what's called wrapping it just loosens the pattern off in the mould slightly just give it a little bit of space Try and get this out without the centre portion of sand coming out. <coughs> That's why we put the screws in. Gently lift it out. See the tape has run opposite ways on that to allow you to be able to get it out. Just dress up the sides here, make it 
a nice smooth entry for the sand. Same with this one. This should come out quite easy because it actually fell out before, but we will give it a little bit, a little bit rough just to make sure. Right, that's quite nice. So again, we'll just tidy up the gate where the sand is going to go in. Make that a little bit deeper. See, all that does, it catches the sand goes into the, the sand. The metal goes into the bottom of there, and any dross or shite hopefully will stop in there. Right. This sounds possibly a little bit on the dry side, but I think it'll, I think it'll be all right. Now you get all the little, little bits out. I want to try to use an airline for this. It doesn't work. This is one of those bellows for pumping up camp beds. Seems to work quite nicely. Quite good. We'll turn our attention now to the top part of the mould. All I need to do with this is put some vent tools through it. And when you're doing this, you put the wire straight through, you don't pull it back straight through like that. Put four in. Same with the end cover. Out and straight through. I didn't put a gagger in that bit there, that is to see a screw to hold it in place. Hopefully the sand or the bond of the sand should hold it in place, I hope. Right, now we've got to get the boxes together, making sure that all right, we have got numbers on them. Last look, make sure no bits have fallen in, looks good. The boxes are on pins and line them up, that's it together. Ready now to light the furnace, melt the metal and pour it in. Once the pulley's cast, um, I'll come back in the workshop and actually machine it. Pulley, you bell end, 